Superb. Let's just walk, walk, just stand up and walk. Stand up and walk. Good afternoon, welcome to Film My Run. Uh, I'm gonna steal a video today uh, from my friend Tim, who um, did a video recently where he compared uh, running with a heart rate strap to running with wrist-based heart rate and tried to get better heart rate from his wrist by what he did was move the watch. Instead of having the watch here on the wrist, he moved the watch up to here. What I'm gonna do and what I often uh, prefer to do when I'm not wearing a heart rate strap is actually to move my watch to my other wrist and put it on the underside of uh, my wrist. That's my preferred option for getting better wrist-based heart rate. Uh, I am also wearing my chest strap. I've got three watches. So I've got the Phoenix 7 on this wrist. Uh, that is doing wrist-based heart rate from my uh, left wrist as normal. Then I've got the um, Epix 2 on this wrist and the Epix 2 is on the underside of my right wrist. So I'm hoping to get better heart rate from that. And then we've got the Phoenix 6 watch, which I'm gonna put in my pocket and that's connected to the heart rate strap on my chest, which is the Garmin HRM Pro. So uh, given all that, we're now gonna run about 7K. We're gonna do one kilometer of warm up, and then five kilometers at pace and then one kilometre of cool down and we'll see what we get at the end. Um, and we're also going to try and make Victoria go quite fast. She's not going to enjoy it. Okay, we're off and running and uh, we'll see, uh, see what we get. Well, Victoria used a cool phrase. This feels punchy for a warm-up. <laughs> punchy. And well, this is punchy, isn't it? Right, 1k warm up done, just about. So we're about to speed up a bit and let's see what happens. Right, one kilometer done. Heart rate on the left wrist. So this is your standard watch position, 149. Heart rate on the inside of my right wrist, 152. So actually about the same. In fact, yeah, 153 on here. So pretty much the same. And heart rate from my strap, also 153. So it looks like they're matching quite well at the moment, all three of them. Okay, just past the second kilometer. And uh, left wrist, right wrist, and chest strap, all 154. Victoria's doing okay, she's keeping up. Okay, just ticked over three kilometers. Well, four kilometers, but three kilometers in our 5K time trial. 158 on my left wrist. 158. 158 on my right wrist. Come on, Vic. 161. 162 on. The chest strap, hoping Vic can keep up. We are pushing it a bit. Right, just check the watches again. So we've got one kilometer to go of our bit of speedy 5K and all three watches, 156 heart rate. Although now I'm talking 160, 160. <laughs> so as I talk, my heart rate goes up, but what's important is they all seem to be matching or very close to each other. Come on, Victoria. There's the park run, 4K sign. Did he tick over? Did you watch tick over? Superb. Let's just walk, walk, just stand up and walk. Stand up and walk. Come on, stand up and walk. Right, I am hoping that Vic has accidentally run a 5K PB there. Yeah. 
Right, back up to a slow jog for the last kilometre home. Down. Cool down, yeah. Um, right, back to heart rate. Left wrist, standard position, 127 BPM. Right wrist, underneath, 130. Might be going up because I'm talking. And chest strap, 133. 131, 134, 137. So then they're ballpark, but they're not exact, are they? They're not the same. Right, there we are, uh, 5K uh, PB, hopefully, or unofficial 5K PB for Victoria. Uh, we've done seven kilometers altogether. And uh, let's go back into the shed quarters and have a look at the computer and see what uh, the differences are between these three uh, watches. Uh, all pretty modern, Phoenix 7, Phoenix 6 and Epix 2. Uh, so all pretty good watches uh, should have some fairly interesting results. Well, according to Garmin, it says that I'm maintaining. You're maintaining, so you yeah. haven't improved. No. That was a hard effort, though. So there we are, we successfully, uh, s secretly got Victoria to uh, an unofficial 5K PB. Uh, 22.39 was her time, according to Strava. Um, but that was only part of the reason that we went out today. Uh, the other reason was to have a little look at um, heart rate from the wrist and from chest strap. Uh, so my friend, Tim Gross, you can go and have a look at his video. Um, I'll link it in the description. Uh, Tim Gross did a video the other day where he uh, tried to get better wrist-based heart rate by moving his uh, watch from the uh, base of his wrist here further up the arm. Uh, to see if that improved the optical heart rate reading. Uh, now what I've always done, uh, as you saw, is I put it on the right wrist, um, underneath my right wrist, to see if I can get better optical heart rate. Uh, so let's have a look at what we got uh, when I loaded all three watches into the DC analyzer uh, tool. So you can immediately see uh, that actually the overall reading is pretty good from all three. They, they all match fairly well most of the way through. Let's just have a little look at the beginning. So the blue, the blue line is the Phoenix 7, which was on my left wrist in the normal position that you would expect your watch to be. Um, the Epix is the, the brownish line, orangey brown line. Uh, that was on the underside of my right wrist and the heart rate strap is being read by the Phoenix 6 watch, which was not on my wrist, it was just in my pocket. Let's just zoom in at the very beginning here. So this section here. Um, and honestly, there is not much difference, is there really? All three watches rise as I start running and continue pretty much the same all the way through. There's, there's you know, marginal differences, but nothing huge. Um, what I did notice was my heart rate dips. Now I have these regular heart rate dips. Let's just have a look at this section here. So you'll see um, there is a bit of a dip here from the, uh, the Phoenix 7 on my left. This, this is the normal position watch. Um, it does drop off a little bit there. So the other, the other watches, the other uh, strap is reading 125 heart rate, whereas uh, the Phoenix 7 is reading 116. So that's a little bit of a dip there. But what you'll notice here is I, when I'm running on Zwift and I'm using a chest strap, I very regularly get these uh, dips in my heart rate. And you'll see the chest strap has again recorded this very odd dip in my heart rate, whereas the wrist-based watches, uh, the Phoenix 7 and the Epix, have not recorded that dip. Whereas here, you'll see both the chest strap and, and the Epix watches have recorded a dip, just not quite so great. And you'll also notice the other interesting thing about optical heart rate is that it does lag a bit. Because you've, you've literally, you've got a distance from your heart to your arm, that distance equates to a lag in the time it takes for it to register what's happening with your heart. So um, the chest strap has recorded this dip here and 
then the Epix has also recorded a slight dip here. Interestingly, the, the Phoenix 7 records the dip around a similar time and then they all kind of come back up at the same time. But if you look at the whole run, in essence, from when, so here we started our fast 5K, all the way through here, all the way through here, little, little strangeness there with the epics, all the way through here to the end of the 5K time trial, it's all pretty much the same, isn't it? Hardly any difference, really. It's there or thereabouts. This is where we walked for a bit at the end when Victoria was completely shattered. And then we got back up to jogging again. And again, we've got another little heart rate dip here where the chest strap goes down, but the other two, the optical watches, just stay where they are. Um, but really, you have to say that in my test, um, both on the left hand wrist and the test on the underside of the right wrist and the chest strap, all of them are, you're not gonna argue, are you? You're not gonna argue with the result there. Um, there's no one watch or one position where it's clearly better or clearly worse. You would argue that the, the chest strap is, is slightly quicker at responding. Um, there's, there's definitely no lag there. Um, and it is picking up rather more regularly these dips. I, I mean, I'm assuming those dips are actually happening and it's not, not a fault anywhere. Um, but overall, I would say that in my test, optical wrist-based heart rate has performed pretty much as well as uh, the chest strap and that this is just one isolated case so uh, you know you'll have plenty of, of um, other examples and I, I do have other examples where optical heart rate has been a disaster and it's not worked at all but in this particular case on this particular day on this particular run all three watches all three heart rate readings are within a gnat's breadth of each other so that is it, that's the end of the video for today. Thank you very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed seeing Victoria get her unofficial 5K PB and uh, hope you found the, uh, the heart rate analysis interesting. Take care until next time. Do please hit that subscribe button uh, on the Film My Run uh, YouTube channel and we'll see you for another Film My Run very soon. Take care, bye bye.